We're all familiar with the Midrash that says that a Kaddish Baruch who went to all of the nations and offered them the Torah, and they refused, and only Kal Yisrael were the ones that accepted it. He went to Esav and said, would you like the Torah? And Esav said, well, tell us what's in it. And Kaddish Baruch Hu said, well, it says, you know, lo, lo, lo tirzach, don't kill. And Esav says, excuse me, but that's who we are. He says, you told us the bracha is al char so I mean, that's, we, we can't accept that. And then he went to Yishmael and said, would you like the Torah? And Yishmael says, well, what's in it? Kaddish Baruch Hu said, well, it says in there that uh, lo tignof, you're not allowed to steal. He says, but, but for us, it says, yad bakol, v'yad kol bo. So we also, that, that's what we do. I'm sorry, we can't take the Torah. And he went to Bnei Lod and said, would you like the Torah? And Bnei Lod said, well, what's in it? And Kaddish Baruch Hu said, well, it says, you know, lo tinaf. He says, well, that's how we were made. We're products of that type of relationship. We can't take it. And Kaddish Baruch Hu said, well, that's the case. And then he went to Kal Yisrael and Kal Yisrael, not seven Ishma, we're going to take it. But I think the Midrash is not really designed to tell us the historical facts. Who were these people? Did they all gather at a different mountain and did they have their own prophet? And they didn't, did they negotiate? And secondly, it seems to be, if that were the case, a Kaddish Baruch is not being very fair because he's picking the one mitzvah that they have a hard time with. I mean, I'm sure he could have picked something that Kal Yisrael had a hard time with too. And Kal Yisrael would have been stuck in the same boat. I think that if we look at this Midrash, it's coming to tell us something about the nature of Torah and the nature of our acceptance of Torah. If we look at those three stories of Esav, Ishmael, and Bnei Lot, we see that a Kaddish Baruch Hu wasn't being so mean. He wasn't challenging them on the one thing that they couldn't do. He was highlighting for them that they had a problem, that all three of them weren't keeping the Sheva Mitzvah of Bnei Noach. Those three things that they said no to, they anyways had to be doing. It was regardless of whether they kept the Torah or not, that's something that they had to do. That was part of the Sheva Mitzvot. And a Kaddish Baruch Hu looked at them and said, if you can't even keep the seven that you already have, then how is it possible that you can go ahead and take the 613, the extras? So therefore, there was no nations gathered at mountains waiting to hear if they were going to take the Torah or not. A Kaddish Baruch Hu looked at all the nations and says, okay, listen, is this nation capable of taking more? And the reality was they were not because they couldn't even take what they had. And he looked to Klal Yisrael and Klal Yisrael was keeping what they were able to do and they were able to take more. And as we approach Shavuot and we approach this idea of Na'asev and Ishma, the way that we demonstrate that we are interested in keeping the Torah and we want more is through our actions. It's not through our words. It's not just Na'asev and Ishma in terms of our vocal acceptance of the Torah. But rather, it's not a seven ishma in the way that we behave, in the way that we act. That's how we demonstrate the acceptance of Torah. We accepted Torah at Har Sinai, but we accept the Torah every day through our choices. So as we are at Shavuot, we should recommit to the idea of Torah mitzvot and our desire to follow a Kaddish Baruch Hu's will.